सो हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरी वन सो इन दिस वीडियो विल बी डिस्कसिंग दि सॉल्यूशन फॉर दि क्वेश्चन डी एफ एस ऑफ द ग्राफ सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दि क्वेश्चन इज ट्राइंग टू से ऑल दो दिस क्वेश्चन नीड्स नो इंट्रोडक्शन बिकॉज दिस इज अ वेरी स्टैंडर्ड एलगोरथम फॉर द ग्राफ सो लेट्स जस्ट क्विकली गो थ्रू द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट एंड देन विल बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ टू अप्लाई डी एफ एस ऑन द ग्राफ लेट स्टार्ट सो यू विल बी गिवन अ कनेक्टेड सो यू विल बी गिवन अ कनेक्टेड अनडायरेक्टेड ग्राफ एंड यू हैव टू परफॉर्म डी एफ एस ऑन द ग्राफ एंड देर इज अ नोट रिटर्न ओवर इयर दैट यूज अ रिकर्सिव अप्रोच टू फाइंड द डी एफ एस ट्रावर्जल ऑफ द ग्राफ स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द जीरो वर्टेक्स सो यू टू अप्लाई द डी एफ एस स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द जीरो वर्टेक्स एंड जीरो वर्टेक्स विल बी द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ द ग्राफ एंड लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस एग्जाम्पल विच इज गिवन टू अस ओवर इयर सो ओवर इयर आई हैव टेकन द सेम एग्जाम्पल विच इज गिवन टू अस इन द टेस्ट केस नंबर वन In the question, it has been mentioned that you have to uh, start the DFS traversal from the zeroth node. So what I'll be doing? First of all, let's understand how to apply depth for such traversal. DFS is very simple. So whenever you encounter a node, what you have to do? First of all, you have to mark that particular node as visited, and then you have to print that node. And at the end, what you have to do? You have to explore all of their neighbors. So this will be. so this is the task which you will be uh, accomplishing for each and every node whenever you encounter a node just mark that node as visited then print that node or add it to a list and then what you have to do you have to call the dfs on the neighbors of that node so let's try to apply the dfs algorithm for this given graph so in order to mark the nodes that visited what we need to do we need to have something called as a boolean visited array so that visited array will be marking the particular node as visited if that node is visited during the dfs traversal then it will be marked as true in the visited array so i'll be creating a visited array and what will be the size of this visited array the size of this visited array will be equivalent to the total number of nodes present inside the graph so how many nodes are present inside this graph so the value of v that is total number of vertexes for this graph is equivalent to 5 and the node numbering starts from 0 so over here this is 0 1 2 3 and 4 so visited array over here is of size equivalent to 5 and now what i'll be doing what i'll be doing i'll be storing all the nodes that i am traversing du during the dfs traversal inside an array list or a list array list or a list depending upon the language which you will be using so over here let's say i have created a list and that list is called the answer list and each and every node that i'll be visiting in my dfs traversal will be included inside my list and the name of that list is answer list and now we are ready for the dfs traversal so let's start the dfs from the node number 0 so i'm encountering this node for the first time right so what i have to do i have to first of all mark the node as visited so i'll be marking it as visited and set this visited array and all the nodes will be initially marked as not visited that means inside the visited array each and every index will contain the value false that is the initialization of the visited array that means none of the node has been visited till now so now we have visited the node number 0 then what you have to do you have to print that node but instead of printing what i'll be doing i'll be adding to that answer list because over here you will be given a function and that function will be applying the dfs that means the logic of dfs will be present inside that function and that function will be returning a list of the nodes that you are traversing in the dfs so basically you need to return a list so that is the reason i'm not printing the node in the output and i'm adding them to the answer list so now let's add zero to the answer list so the next thing which i need to do is explore all the neighbors and over here one thing is very important you should only explore the neighbor if and only if that neighbor has not been visited if that neighbor has not been visited then you can call the dfs on that neighbor so over here for zero how many neighbors are there i can see 2 3 and 1 are the neighbors so let's call the dfs for the node number 2 as it is not visited and all the other nodes are also not visited so i'm calling the dfs on the node number 2 so now again i'll be following this three process that is the first step is to mark that node as visited so mark 2 as visited now what you need to do you need to print that node that is add it to the answer list and at the end explore all the neighbors so how many neighbors are there of 2 i can see 0 and 4 but 0 is already visited so as i mentioned do not explore the node that is already visited so i'll be exploring the node number 4 because it is not at all visited 
So now what we'll be doing, we'll be again following the three step that is mark the node as visited. So marking four as visited, printing the node that is adding four to the answer list and at the end exploring all the neighbors. So how many neighbors are there of four? I can see only one neighbor two, but two is already visited, right? So I'll not be calling DFS on two. So what should I do? I'll be backtracking. I'll be backtracking. That means I'll be coming back to the node number two. And over here, I know that four has been visited, two has been visited and zero has been visited. Now, do we have any neighbors of two that are yet to be explored? No, there are no neighbors of two because two has two neighbors, zero and four, and both of them are already visited, right? So again, from here, I'll be backtracking. And now currently I'm standing at node number zero. From node number zero, which all neighbors are not explored, I can see three has not been explored and it is not visited. So I'll be calling DFS on the node number three. And now what I'll be doing, I'll be again following the three step process. That is marking three as visited. So mark this three as visited. Now what I need to do, add it to the answer list. That is three will be added. And now what I need to do, explore all the neighbors. So how many neighbors are there of three? I can see only one neighbor, but, is, but it is already visited. So you can skip that neighbor. So I need to get back, that means backtracking to the parent node, that is node number zero and three has been visited. So from zero, which other neighbors are not visited, I can see zero, one has not been visited, right? So I'll be calling DFS, marking it as visited, printing it, that means adding it to the answer list and at the end, I need to explore all the neighbors, but there are no neighbors of one that has not been visited, right? All the neighbors of one are visited. So what I'll be doing, I'll be again backtracking to zero and now currently I'm standing at the node number zero. And from node number zero, I cannot see any neighbor that has yet not been explored, right? So you have traversed the entire graph and whatever is the sequence of node present inside the answer list is your DFS traversal. So in this manner, you can traverse the entire graph with the help of DFS algorithm. So now let's see the algorithmic part of this DFS function, right? So I'll be writing down the algorithm of DFS and you yourself will be able to code it in any of the other language. You just need to get the reference of the algorithm. So let's write down the algorithm of DFS. So inside the DFS algorithm, what I'll be doing, let's say I have a function that goes by the name DFS. And we know that in order to represent a graph, we'll be either having adjacency list or adjacency matrix. Let's say over here, I have an adjacency list that represents the entire graph. And what else do we need? I need a visited array. Let's say we have an argument that says visited array. And what else I need? I need the current node whichever node is being currently explored in DFS function, I need it in the argument. So what is the first step whenever you encounter a node? I'll be following this same process over here as well. That is whenever you encounter a node, what you need to do, you need to mark it as visited. So let's mark this node as visited. So marking visited means I'll be going to the visited array and at the visited array, inside the visited array at the index number current, what I'll be doing, I'll be putting the value true. And after this, what we need to do, we need to print that node. So over here, let's imagine that we have created an answer list that is going to store all the nodes of our DFS traversal. So now I'll be adding the current node to my answer list. Answer.add the current node. So current node has been added. Now what else I need to do? I need to iterate over all the neighbors of the current node. That means iterate all the neighbors. So over here, we have the graph representation with the help of adjacency list. So I will be using a loop that is for each loop. And in your language, in your C++ or any other programming language, you'll be having a similar loop, right? So what I'll be doing, I'll be exploring all the neighbors of the current node. So inside the adjacency list, I'll be going to the index number current and I'll be iterating over the list. Now what I'll be doing, if that neighbor has not been explored, that means if the neighbor is not visited, then I'll be calling the DFS function on it. So if the neighbor is not visited, that means the value will be equivalent to false. That means if the no neighbor is not visited, then the value at the visited array will be equivalent to false. If the neighbor is not visited, then what I'll be doing, I'll be simply calling the DFS function. That means DFS on the neighbor node. 
so the first argument was the adjacency list as it is and the next argument was a visited array and at the end what do we have we have the new neighbor node right and that's it and over here this is the, our end of the function i hope you got the idea about how to apply the dfs algorithm and this is our entire dfs algorithm so what is the time and space complexity of this dfs algorithm so how many nodes and how many vertices are present how many nodes and how many edges are present inside the graph so let's say there are v number of vertices and e number of edges so over here while i was applying dfs on the entire graph you might have observed that you have encountered each and every node and you have encountered each and every edge so basically the time complexity of the dfs algorithm is equivalent to order of v plus e that is where v denotes the number of vertices and e denotes the number of edges in the graph what about the space complexity over here i have used a visited array in order to mark the nodes as visited and the dfs algorithm is a recursive algorithm right so if i ignore the space occupied by my recursive stack then the space will be occupied by only our visited array right so our space complexity comes out to be order of v so this is our time and space complexity for our dfs algorithm order of v plus e and order of v so now let's see the coding implementation for this same over here i'll be writing down the code in java but with the help of the algorithm you can write down the code in any other languages as well so what i'll be doing i'll be creating an answer list that will be storing the nodes right so i'll be needing an answer list and i'll be creating the answer list so here is my answer array list and what else i'll be needing i'll be needing a boolean visited array so the size of this visited array will be equivalent to the total number of vertices and v denotes the total number of vertices and let's initialize this answer as well now what i'll be doing i'll be creating a function that goes by the name dfs and the first argument will be the adjacency list of that and the next argument will be visited and the next argument will be will be the current node and i have to apply the dfs from the zeroth vertex right so i'll be uh, passing zeroth vertex in the dfs so let's write down the logic of our dfs algorithm so public and this dfs will not be returning anything right so its return type will be equivalent to visited will be equivalent to void integer adjacency list and then boolean visited array and then the current node so first of all what i need to do i need to mark this current node as visited and what i'll be doing i'll be adding the current node to our answer list now i'll be exploring all the neighbors right so in order to explore all the neighbors what i'll be doing i'll be first of all extracting the list of neighbors from the adjacency list so that will be neighbors is equal to from the adjacency list at the index number current i'll be getting the entire list and now i'll be iterating over this entire neighbors list and i'll be calling the dfs on the neighbors if and only if that neighbor has not been visited right so if not visited i'll be calling the dfs and dfs call will be done and neighbor and after completion of this dfs the control will be coming back at line number 46 and after 46 i'll be returning the answer list and that's it so let's see the compilation and let's try to compile and run the compilation was completed and let's try to submit the solution and the problem has been successfully submitted so that was the algorithmic part and the coding implementation part for our dfs algorithm thank you